Hello everybody, welcome to the rebuild. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the reed valve. That's just uh, four screws. Take the cage out. Next up, we're going to go on the power valve side of the cylinder. We're going to remove that cover. Then remove the power valve control arm. And that's on by a little clip and the gasket. Then we'll go on the other side. We're, uh, right now we're moving the head, the cylinder head, which is just six, six nuts, and that should come right off. And then on the other side of the power valve cover, which is holding one of the cylinder torque nuts, which is holding down the cylinder to the engine. So there's four of those. And after you take those four off, you could just slide the cylinder right off. You might have to hit it with the hammer. And congratulations, you just did your first topic. And then you would remove the wrist pin, but I'm doing that later. So this is some of the stuff that you're going to need. You're going to need the case splitters. And these are two different types of case splitters. You're going to need uh, a crank puller. You're going to need the flywheel puller. Make sure this flywheel puller fits your flywheel. It's a 26 meter um, clutch hub holder. You might need a piston puller if you can't get the, the wrist pin out because the piston is just so jammed in there. And then a gear jammer, but you can just use a, a copper washer or a penny. Back to the rebuild. We're gonna take off the base gasket. Then we're going to go to the flywheel side or the stator side. Take off that cover, a few, a few bolts. Then take off the flywheel lock nut. And then this is where you're going to need that special tool, the flywheel puller. So make sure that fits your flywheel threads. So you're going to hold that with a wrench. Then you're going to turn in the screw. And it should just pop off. You're not supposed to use the air hammer, but I'm pretty weak. It should come right off. And then take off that starter gear. Then we're going to go to the clutch side. We're going to take off the water pump first. And then take off the propeller. And then we're going to remove the power valve spring. Then we'll remove the clutch cover. The inner clutch cover. Then remove those four spring bolts. I think we're taking out the outer cover right now. That all comes off. Make sure you got the gasket. And then we're going to remove the uh, clutch cover. Or I mean the pressure plate. So those four, those four spring bolts, make sure you do it in a crisscross pattern so you don't warp the, the clutch basket. And take the pressure plate off. There should be a, a washer right there. Right behind it. Or throw out bearing, I think it's called. And there's going to be a lock tab on the on the clutch hub, and you're going to have to use a hammer and a chisel to chisel the tab away. Oh, right now we're taking out the clutch disc. And here's the hammer. Chisel that away so you can loosen the bolt. And this is where you're going to need the uh, the clutch hub holder because it's going to spin. Make sure you got that on there nice and tight, not too tight. Oh, you're not supposed to use the air hammer, but I'm pretty weak. And that should pop off. Now we're removing the primary gear. You're going to have to keep the clutch basket on so you can stuff that gear jammer in there. And the primary gear is anti-clockwise but counterclockwise, so it's not lefty-loosey. And then right here I'm taking off the clutch basket. There should be a bearing behind that too. So make sure that doesn't fall out. You might have to wiggle it a little bit. It might be on there pretty tight. And then we're going to take off the rest of the gears. The kickstart gear, the idle gear, and the primary gear, and then the shift mechanism. 
I think. Yeah, we're doing the primary gear. Once you have that loosened, there's a woodruff key under there. Make sure you got that. You might have to use a hammer to chisel that up. And now we're doing the kickstart gear. Then there's like a spring. Just pull that out. And then there should be another washer behind that thing too. Now I'm doing the idle gear. That's on by a stair clip. There's another washer behind that and the kickstarter. Then pull out the shift rod. And then the shift drum. The star shift detent. And the camera roller. And some of you guys might have like a shift pause mechanism, but this one's different. So once you have all the gears removed, now we can split the cases. Yep, on the other side too, on the flywheel side. So you're going to have to remove all those bolts. All of these bolts. There's all bolts around here. I forget how many there is. Do it in a crisscross pattern so you don't warp the case. And then after you do that, we should be ready to split the cases. Make sure they're all out too. So here's this case splitter. Make sure you got that on there. I like to use the flatter one because the other one's hard to, harder to put on. Don't put any screwdrivers in here. It should pop right up with this tool. It's coming up easy. You might have to use the air hammer, but you're not supposed to. This one looks like it's coming up pretty easy. And there we go. Cases are split. Then this is where you'll need the... Alright, right now I'm taking out the the transmission on the shift forks, the shift drum, and then the transmission comes out as one piece. So on some of uh, on crankshafts you're gonna need that crank puller to pull out the crankshaft, but on this beta engine it should come right out. So right now I'm doing the transmission. I should slide right out. There should be a whole bunch of washers behind there, so make sure you don't lose those. Yeah, this beta engine, the crankshaft comes right out. You don't have to use that tool. And here we go. My crankshaft is pretty beat up. Piston looks pretty bad. So I'll go over that in the next video. Make sure you watch the next video because they're pretty long. It's been about two months. Finally got the uh, engine cases back. He put in brand new bearings. As you can see, there's still there's still like some goo. I'm gonna wipe that off from when he put in pressed in the new the new crank bearings. Looks like he wiped it off on this side. So it's been about two months and I finally got all the parts I need got the three base gaskets got the bottom end kit with some of the seals and the case gasket new reeds uh, new head but I got the head repaired so I don't need that brand new crankshaft and then here is a this is the brand new cylinder or the the replated, the replated cylinder. And then here's the old. This is the old jug. I don't know if you can see the scratches. There were the score marks. So this is the old. I forgot a brand new piston by Prowax. <clears throat> so yeah, there's there's some there's some uh, gaskets and seals that I'm missing, but I'm gonna have to reuse them because I don't feel like waiting anymore. It's been two months. For some reason, the dealer gave me a horn, and extra power valve flaps. But all I needed was the reed kit. Uh, I don't know what I'll do with those. Um, and here's the brand new crankshaft. I am 
excited. So right here we have the brand new crankshaft. Now this is to a mechanic. This is like the holy grail. So you can see this one. It's it's done for. It blew up, and here is our brand new one, right from right from beta. It is a OEM one. It is not aftermarket. So I'm super pumped up. So before we get started. So before we start building this engine, we're going to need to check and measure some things. So starting on the top end, I'd say the first thing is probably you're going to have to get one of these bore gauges. And you're going to have to measure the bore of the cylinder in different places. So the way you do that is you stick this bore gauge in the cylinder in the top. And you also are supposed to do the bottom too so you get a better reading. And then you're going to take your micrometer and you're going to measure that. But my, my piston and cylinder are uh, machined right for the clearance or exactly to the clearance that I want. They replated it and re-welded and bored it to that specific measurement and then not only that but you're also going to have to measure the piston right here and you're going to take your micrometer and you're going to measure the piston on the skirt from here from here to here and you're going to take the subtraction and that's your that's your cylinder clearance and then you're not done yet you still have to measure the ring end gap and by doing that you're going to Put one of these rings in the in the jug and then push it down with the piston about an inch or two and then you're gonna have to get your your feeler gauges and I forget what the what the what the specification is but you're gonna feel if it's too loose or too tight and so head on over to the next video and please be sure to like, share, and subscribe.